Whew. Welcome back friends, thanks for being here. This is Steve, and we are moving along on the compact portable project. This is not a compact portable. I'm not trying to pull any wool over your eyes or anything, this just is not a compact portable. What I need from this machine though is this floppy drive, because as you remember from the video, I'll link it up there somewhere, um, the two floppy drives lit up but didn't work, and I don't have any five and a quarter inch floppy disks anyway, so that's a non-starter there. Um, and the hard disk was bad, so that's gone, and the keyboard was bad, so that's gone. So I'm in this weird chicken and egg thing where I can't repair the keyboard because if I did, I couldn't test because the thing won't boot because it's got no boot media in it. Um, so we got to get some boot media. I'm going to steal this floppy drive, and I'm going to put an operating system on this floppy disk. And in the meantime, I'm still waiting for parts to come in. I got a box of parts from Mauser. I got another box of parts from Mauser. I got these cool 3D printed drive bay adapters to put the three and a half inch drive in the five and a quarter inch drive bay. I got some cables and I got one of these little things here. Oh, I'm picking stuff up off the floor. This will be another video coming up. This is a USB flash drive socket on the front and a 34 pin um, floppy drive on the back, floppy drive cable connector on the back. So this is a cycle accurate, speed accurate USB to floppy disk adapter that will look like floppy disks to the machine. So I'm going to put both this three and a half inch floppy and this three and a half inch not floppy into the machine. And I have the keyboard repair kit. This is the foam and foil that goes inside of the compact keyboard. And then last but not least, all the way down at the bottom, I have the floppy drive controller. These are just some sockets that I'm that I stuck on there to get the project started. Um, they're not actually even soldered in place, so there you go with that. The floppy drive controller card I need to build so that I can understand and talk to something better than a 360K floppy drive inside of the compact portable. That will replace the existing um, floppy drive controller that's in there. I think that's a floppy drive controller with a parallel port, and this is a floppy drive controller with a serial port. So I'm going to lose a parallel port, but that's okay, because I don't really plan on printing. And if I do, I'll figure that part out when we get there. So stick around for all the fun shenanigans that are coming up. Oh, I know you're asking yourselves, but T.O., where do I get my boot disks from? AllBootDisks.com. So, what we have is a bunch of boot disks that have all been collected, choreographed, created. What's that word I'm looking for? Curated. Curated is the word I'm looking for. Uh, and I want some MS DOS boot disks, but we've got DOS, we've got Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows ME, the best Windows ever, Windows NT, Windows 2000, Windows XP Home, and Pro. And I want DOS. So I'm going to click on Download Boot Disks. We got two different kinds here. One of these is automatic boot disks, and the other one is disk at images. Get. Um, the automatic boot disk is a self running, self extracting archive file that actually has the writer that writes out the boot disks to your floppy disk drive all built in. These .img files are for non Windows operating systems, and you can use a variety of disk tools to get these written out to disk. So without Further ado, well, maybe a little more ado, as I've got to change camera setups and all the other jazz. All this behind-the-scenes technical wizardry that you guys don't really get to see on a routine basis. Um, I'm going to get over to a command prompt, and I'm going to show you how to work with the image files. And, uh, and I'm going to get over to a Windows box, and I'm going to show you how to work with the executable files. Okay, so we're going to take the downloaded .img file that we got from allbootdisks.com, and we are going to do it the easy way of uh, putting it on a floppy disk from inside of a Unix-like operating system. Under Linux, you would type in lsblk to find out what your block devices are. This is not Linux, this is Mac OS. It's close, but not exact. Under Mac OS, you do disk util space list, and that will list out your partitions, your volumes, your disk drives. Disk zero is my internal hard disk, 500 gigs. That's not, I'm not putting a one and a half meg floppy image on a 500 gig drive. That would be kind of a waste. Disk one is technically a container inside of the container that is disk zero. That's a Mac OS thing, no big deal there. Disk two, however, says 
1.5 megabytes right here. 1.5 is rounded up from 1.4. That's the one that I want. So it's slash dev slash disk two, as you can see right there or not, because the highlighting is not really that much of a different color on screen. But uh, next thing to do is to take a look at what type of file we downloaded just to make sure we've got what we think we have, dos6.22.img. I'm gonna use the file command for this. And in a Unix-like world, file doesn't just look at the extension, which might be like a JPEG or a PCX image or a PNG image or something like that that you're familiar with. Um, in this case, it's a disk image, it's a .img file. And if I just looked at that with .img, I might think it's a picture. Uh, but it's not. So we run the file tool. The file tool actually examines inside and figures out that this is a DOS slash MBR, master boot record, boot sector, and it is of the FAT12 variety. So that's exactly what we want. So it's a good thing that we got that. Um, now to get this thing written out the disk, I'm going to use a tool called DD. I'm going to use sudo because I'm writing out to a disk that I may or may not have permissions to, and I've, I've got all the privileges, so why not use them? sudo dd for disk direct, device direct, direct device, I don't even know what dd stands for. if equals dos 6.22.img, if would be input file, of equals slash dev slash disk2, of would be the output file. So that's running, and this is going to take some time because I'm actually writing to a floppy disk at this moment, and uh, they're slow. So in the meantime, I'm going to head over to the Toads Discord and see what's going on with all my friends over there, and uh, get ready for the FT8 off competition, and talk about some retro computers and all that other fun stuff. If you want to get on the Toads Discord, there's a link in the description down below. It is free to join. I'd love to see you there. All right, and we are done. That took three minutes and 15 seconds to write out almost, I guess it's like 1.3 megs worth of disk. So that's how slow floppy disks were. And what's really funny about it is this is a USB floppy drive that is attached to a USB-C port. So it's just mechanical speed issues. So there you go. That is how you write out a floppy disk in a Unix-like operating system. Let's move this around and do it with the .exe file, the self-writing executable file under Windows. All right, so I keep a Windows XP machine handy. Um, it's actually a virtual box, as you can see. I call it XP Playground, and I like it because Windows XP is fairly lightweight and does most of the Windows things that I need to do. So this is it. I stuck the floppy disk in the USB floppy drive and attached it to the computer and then connected it through virtual box into the VM, into the virtual machine, and here is the contents of the floppy disk drive. So you can see this looks pretty uh, pretty DOS-like. Uh, let's see what we have for some file details here. This boot disk that I downloaded, this is the DOS 6.2.2 version. They have some other versions out there that don't have as many utilities on them, but um, this one does have quite a few. Let's see if I can do anything at all about the... Nope. That is what it is. Okay. So, couple of different files on here. We've got, it looks like a pretty good amount of utilities for working with, like a, trying to rescue a machine or something. This c.bat file, what's in here? Uh, c colon dir slash s, go to start. So it's just going to infinitely loop over reading your hard disk contents over and over and over again. I don't know. We've got an auto exec bat. Let's see what they're trying to load on here. All right, we have MSCD-ROM extensions, and it's looking for a device named Banana, and the um, drive letter it's going to give it is R. So we'll see how well that works out. And then I've got CD1, CD2, CD3, CD4. Those are CD-ROM device drivers. Let's see which one they're using in config sys. Open with. I would like to select a program from the list. Thanks for being as helpful as possible. All right, in config sys, we're using cd1.sys. And then they have some optional parameters in case your CD drive is at a different location physically inside of your machine. Files equals 30, buffers equals 20, and they turn on high mem. So you get some access to some extended memory area. Nice. 
And I'm looking over here because that's where my screen is that I'm sharing with you guys. So that's why I'm looking back and forth all the time. We've got command com. We need that. Check disk. We're checking out hard disk, Dell tree, DOS key. No, oh, DOS key. That's nice. Edit. So we can edit files. EMM386 in case we need some memory. F disk for partitioning hard disks. Fine for looking for data in text files and pipe outputs. Format for forwarding, formatting disks. Hi mem. We talked about IO. Label for labeling disks. I don't know that in an emergency situation I'm going to need to label a disk, but whatever. Memory for checking out the memory. There's a dot at 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 file. I don't know what that's about. Let's see. There is open. What's it going to open it with? Notepad, of course. Equals equals one. Okay, whatever. All right. Mouse.ini, mouse.sys. So we got a couple of different mouse choices. MS CD ROM extensions, MS DOS sys is one of the boot files that you need. QBasic.exe, no, this isn't for writing basic programs. This is because the MS DOS editor is actually just a front end to the QBasic programming language interface. So they're kind of both needed there to make that work. But I mean, you can write some basic programs if you wanted to. Uh, restore for restoring from backups, scan disk for checking disks, setver for setting version numbers, share for making sure there's not file locking issues. That's weird. Sys for transferring operating system to another drive. Tree for looking at files, undelete, unformat, and xcopy. So that's actually not a bad little DOS toolbox to have in case of some kind of an emergency. So that's pretty good. But what we're going to do next is we are going to overwrite that. All right, so DOS622.exe. Um, just double click on it. Choose run. Thanks for using allbootdisks.com. Insert the floppy to write. And in my case, I had to actually remove all other physical floppy drives. It doesn't give you any ability to specify a drive letter. So you kind of have to own that yourself. So I removed all other floppy drives. So the only one left is this USB drive. And then it has no choice but to write to that one. So I have a floppy in there. I'm going to say OK. And it says the disk is not empty. All data on your disk will be lost. Yeah, I want it to be lost. I want to do this thing. Yes, I want to continue. And then formatting, writing, and verify. This will probably take another three minutes. All right, let's take a look and see how that wrote out. Looks about the same to me. Let's go see if they actually work. All right, folks, the moment of truth. We've got our floppy disk here. And we have an old Gateway G6350. This will be coming up in an upcoming episode because this is a recovery PC from a local ham club. And it's got a bunch of ham shack stuff on it from the Pentium 2 era. Let's put the floppy disk in, turn the power on, and see what magic erupts. Gateway. And I am going to change system settings by running setup. Yep, CMOS settings are wrong and the display types are wrong. Probably because this thing has a dead battery. That's okay though. 01. Alright. Let's see. Boot up settings. We want to boot off of the floppy disk. And no trickery here. We're going to disable all other boot media. So floppy, floppy. Floppy disabled, disabled, disabled. And then we need to go into advanced and make sure this is set up for a legacy keyboard. It's kind of weird that when you plug a USB keyboard into a machine in order to get it to run on boot, you have to use legacy USB support. It's kind of backwards. It should say, in my mind, it should say non-legacy USB support or legacy support for USB or something like that. I don't know. It's just not enough words and not enough room for words. All right, let's save this and see if it boots. Oh, the suspense. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all.
Starting MS DOS. Woohoo! Loading the CD ROM driver for device name Banana. And no, I didn't actually make that out to be Banana, that's the way it came. Man, that sounds nasty. Alright. See if we have all of our boot stuff. Yep, that looks like what we saw before. Let's see if we can see the hard disk. We cannot see the hard disk because DOS 622 does not recognize whatever hard disk setup is in this machine. But, boot disks work! Yes! All right, so now, I needed this boot disk because this drive and this floppy disk is going into the old compact portable from a video we did a while back. And uh, trying to revive, trying to, trying to breathe some more modern life, some any kind of life into that at all. Thanks for being awesome. This was a blast.